Improv Tipsters, welcome back to Improv Tips, where I and some of the best improvisers in the world give you improv tips and advice to make you a better, more confident, and happier improviser wherever you are in your improv journey. I am, as always, your host, Paul Valencourt. Let's begin. So today I want to talk about making big choices, making big choices or making big decisions in the scene. I kind of use them interchangeably. Um, I've been teaching a lot lately and I see students sometimes struggling with this idea of making big choices. They tend to want to make these smaller, quote unquote, safer choices um, and not risking as much. And and they think sort of on some intuitive level that that's going to make the scene easier to do. And it is really just the exact opposite. The bigger the choice, the easier the scene is to do for you, right? Because you are, um, you remember in, in Marvel movies where Thor has his hammer, he spins, it, spins, it, spins, it, spins, it, spins, it, fast, fast, and then he whoosh, and then he, it draws him along. And that's what allows him to fly, right? That's really what a big decision does for you. It's sort of whoosh, it's this forward thrust, and it draws you along through the scene. And then at that point, right, you made a big promise to yourself, to the audience, to your ensemble mates, and everyone knows what's going on, right? And then you can play it more easily. They can help you play more easily. The audience knows kind of how to watch the scene because they know what your character is about, right? And, that, and then it just draws you along the scene and it makes it 10 times easier. You don't have to worry about a lot of tiny little decisions. You've made that big decision. And that sort of determines a lot of stuff for you as we go. So let's talk about big decisions. What are they? What aren't they? All this kind of stuff. So when we're making big decisions, we're sort of looking for a little bit of a Goldilocks zone, sort of right, a, cer a certain kind of decision. We don't want things that are too small, like I'm kind of happy, I'm kind of sad, I'm kind of nice, right? The, obviously, that's too small, right? And by the same token, a big decision doesn't mean the loudest, wackiest, most surprising thing. It's not things like, oh, I'm made of rubber. Oh, we're doing the Star Wars trash compactor scene, word for word, right? Or, or I'm just going to yell the whole time. These are sort of quote unquote big decisions, but they're just not the kind of big decisions that we want. We want something sort of in the middle, something that is still about our character and about our relationship with our partner, but that we can commit to in a very big way, right? A lot of times it is like an emotion, a want, a drive, and if the relationship is really together, then maybe it's a premise, right? But I kind of put that at the bottom of my list. Emotion, want, drive, those are the things that I think really are big decisions. Because once your character has a strong emotion, want, or drive, it draws them through the scene. It kind of tells them what they're going to do and kind of how they're going to do it, right? A premise does to a certain extent, but these other three, emotion, want, and drive, are the ones that really make it happen, right? And a lot of times, we're either giving ourselves a big playable gift or our partner is giving a big playable gift. And the way to turn that into a big decision or a big choice is to just turn that up and play that idea to the nth degree, right? So, so it's not inventing something totally new. It's taking that in and then deciding how to play. I made this video, ding, ding, about, about discovery and decision. And it talks a lot about that, okay? And then once we have that big decision or that big choice, it's about how do we play it? I made this video, ding, ding, have, say, do. And there's three different ways to play a gift that you're given. And that really helps you amp it up, right? But let's, let's use an example, if we could. So let's say I'm in a scene and we're uh, putting up a tent and I put up the tent really well and my partner and says, my gosh, you're so outdoorsy, right? Right then, I can I could just be like, yeah, well, I like camping, and, and you know, we always just go camping when I was a kid or whatever, and that's fine, but it's really a small choice. That's not a big choice or a big decision, right? For me, as a player, having done this a few years, I usually turn it all the way up, and then maybe I'm like Tarzan. I was just like raised in the woods, and I don't necessarily need to talk about being raised in the woods, but I am there. There's a snake, snap that snake's neck and just eat that snake or put it on the fire. And I can whittle a, you know, a frying pan out of a tree or whatever. I'm like super like Tarzan, or maybe I'm super survivalist guy. And I've got like a backpack full of all the survival things that I need. And I know all the ins and outs of making the forest work for me. Or maybe someone who really loves nature. And I just embrace nature in this way. All those are three different takes on it. And all those things I could turn way, way up off the big playable gift that my partner gave me of it, of outdoorsy. So really, I, I ordinarily say that, that, that what your character ends up being is the gift that you're given plus how you play it equals your character. The gift that you're given plus how you play it equals your character, right? And that's it. That's You discover this new big big playable gift. Either you give it to yourself or ideally your partner gives it to you. And then you decide how to play it. And I say, turn it all the way up. 
turn it all the way up. And then also, if it's coming from this big playable gift, this emotion or this want or this drive, it has a certain organic nature to it where the decisions you're making are coming from somewhere. They're not inventions. They're not just made up for laughs. They're just things that are, that are growing out of that little seed that was planted. That big playable gift is the seed and then we sort of water it and we grow it and we make bigger and bigger and bigger choices. These will lead to plots, these will lead to premises, all the things that, that we want in the scene, but we have to put them kind of in the right order, right? Emotion, want and need, character and relationship in the front and premise and plot in the background, right? They are in the background. The front thing, the thing we need to concentrate on the most is always the relationship and our character. Right? And our partner's character, that's that's relationship, right? So when we're playing the scene, we want to be thinking about that. We want to think about, think about making these big choices. And really, making a big choice is making the big choice to play the thing that you've got to the nth degree, to really turn it up. And that's really how the work gets done. And I, when I see this with my students, when I say, just play it bigger, T go to that, I'll commit to that more, turn that up, right? That's the thing that, that, that really makes the difference for them. Okay, I have a great tool for you in just a second. I wanna say if you're enjoying the tips, please consider subscribing and liking and commenting down below. Also down below, there's a link to my new free ebook as well as the book that I wrote called The Triangle of the Scene. These are some things that, that people seem to enjoy, so I'm telling you all about them. But now here's the tool that I want to, uh, to, to give you that I think really helps people sort of really concretize this idea. The tool is called, um, the tool is called uh, Here's the Thing. Here's the thing. A lot of times when we're in scenes, I will ask students if their scene is sort of like chugging along, but it hasn't really sort of hit, hasn't really taken off yet. I'll say, when you're in the scene, can you feel when your scene is struggling? Can you feel when your scene is sort of low energy and hasn't found its feet yet? And if they say yes, great. Because another thing I say all the time is it's never too late to make a good decision. It's never too late to make a good decision. You've been playing the scene for one minute two minutes, right? And it's still sort of just kind of chugging along, hasn't really found its feet yet. This is the time to make a good decision, to amp it up, to open it up, right? And, and we can use this tool called, here's the thing. Because when we say here's the thing in a scene, right? The, the tool is basically saying, here's the thing, right? I, I'm in my scene, I'm chugging along, chugging along with my partner, and all of a sudden I realize, you know what? This really isn't going anywhere. This really isn't sort of like amped up yet. So I can use this tool. I say to my partner, I look at them and I say, here's the thing. And then the next thing I say kind of has to be the thing. I don't say, here's the thing. Nice weather we're having, right? Nice weather we're having is what we'd say in English. I, I can't say, here's the thing. Nice weather we're having. What I can say though is, here's the thing. I'm quitting. Here's the thing. I want a divorce. Here's the thing. I'm in love with you. Here's the thing. I love nature. I love it more than anything I've ever loved, any person I've ever come into contact with. I love it. I love to be in nature. I want to move away from our house and move out here into nature. Once I say, here's the thing, it pushes me to make that next big choice, right? And I think ideally we want to make those choices at the beginning of the scene. The sooner we make them, the longer we get to play with them, right? But it's never too late to make a good decision. Here's the thing is a great tool for that. Um, when you're doing your scenes this week, think about that. If you're in the scene, you can feel like, oh man, this is kind of really running down or it's kind of going slow. Make that big choice, make that big decision about yourself, maybe about your partner, right? Here's the thing about you. Here's the thing about you. I've been watching you and you are the most survival oriented person I've ever met. Like the rest of us in a zombie apocalypse will die, but you, my friend, you're gonna lead us out. You're gonna be our savior. Boom, then your partner just has to yes and that and we're off to the races on this idea, right? So I can give it to myself, I can give it to my partner, but make that a big choice and then play it out. Show me, show me how you can have it or say it or do it. Check out that video for some more tips about that. Thank you guys for watching. Here's another improv tip you might like and here's another one that you might like and I'll see you next week.